Mocha is a really important part of the Asian American and Chinese American culture. What would you say is a word that would sum it up? Community. We are a physical and philosophical space for different cultures and, and people to come together and uh, celebrate their, their experiences. So at MOCA we have um, many different exhibitions, education program, public programs. We have kind of a full panoply of cultural and educational offerings for people to learn more about Chinese America and to celebrate sto stories about them and be entertained with different exhibitions. So Nancy, how did the idea of Museum of Chinese in America come about? It was started by Charlie Lai and Jack Chen um, over 30 years ago. They would have these long conversations walking through Chinatown about how they could kind of change the world, I guess. Uh, and in their, in their long walks, they um, one time saw that somebody had thrown away photographs and letters, and they thought that that was such a travesty um, and wanted to, I guess, save those stories. Um, along, along the same lines, they were noticing that a lot of the businesses were turning over, a lot of old timers were dying off, um, and they began um, dumpster diving. Um, and they would, they would just really pull out things that people thought of as trash or were ready to discard, and they started collecting all of these um, things as if they were, as if they were precious, which, which they are. Um, and, and they started an oral history project, and over the years, um, they, they turned into the Museum of Chinese in America. So what do you think some of the difficulties of starting an establishment like MOCA were? What, what aren't? To, to be a community that, um, I mean, I, I hesitate to say this, but a marginalized community um, to, to build a place that ends up like this, in this fine building and a fine part of town with all sorts of people coming through. I mean, it's, it's really magic. It's, um, Really, I think that it's exceeded the founders' dreams. So here we are in the lovely Chinatown, and it could be said that Chinatown is like a museum in itself because you can see how people have emerged different generations and come into America. How do you think that MOCA takes it to the next level here in Chinatown? I think that, I think that we're like a, what do you call it, like a tutorial for, for, uh, the, for this community, for, um, Chinese American history and uh, Asian American community. What this museum attempts to do is educate the broader public more generally about Chinese America and also enable people to understand that it's not a narrow history of one group in the United States, but to understand this history, one would better understand the whole history of the U.S. The museum is, of course, focused on Chinese Americans in a larger scope, Asian Americans, but it is a, a museum which attempts to have a living history for the benefit and understanding of all of us who live in this country. So the new MOCA here opened in 2009, but it was on 7 Mulberry. Do you think the mission of MOCA changed while it changed venues, or do you think it stayed the same? I wouldn't say that the mission necessarily changed, but uh, it's, a huge, it's a huge leap in terms of growth. So I think that we're, we're growing and developing and learning about who we serve and what we are and um, how we can share people's stories to the best of our ability. So like the evolution of the building of MOCA itself, I mean moving addresses, how do you think that MOCA has evolved over time? I think that our outreach has just grown um, and our uh, ability to present things on a larger scale 
um, is is really kind of key right now. There's a lot of mediums that I see that you're using here. I mean, you have photography, you have paintings, you have movies. What general message do you think it's spreading to the Asian American community and also people who um, are not from the Asian American community that are coming here? I think that we're excited about our community and, and the kinds of things that our community is producing. It, it's not hard work. There are so many interesting things that are happening in all the different disciplines and it's it's almost like we can't keep up with how much is happening um, fast enough to like put up an exhibit or a program or a party or a talk or all of that. Why would you say that this is a good destination for people who aren't Chinese American? I think that uh, the way that the way that we present and feature different voices in the community, I think that it resonates across cultures and um, perspectives. The first time I actually visited the museum, I came during an afternoon and you know the largest audience at that time were school children. And the school children, none of them were Asian. And that particular group had, happened to be Hispanic and Spanish speaking. Um, maybe around the age of nine or ten. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for children when they're young to be better understanding and educated about others who have perhaps similar experiences such as themselves but don't look like themselves or share some of the same rituals in everyday life. It's not, we're not just for the Asian American community or the Chinese American community. We're really about telling the story of um, of people in America, um, and, and all of us come from somewhere else. I feel like it represents kind of America. It's like one big melting pot, and you, you don't need to be from one certain place to come over here. It's Absolutely. Just, yeah. I it's, mean, I'm Filipino-American, and yet uh, this is home to me. I lived in a lot of places when I was younger, so home was always a very difficult thing for me to define. I lived in a lot of places in this country and in other countries. By working at a place like MOCA, it um, not only educates me more about my identity as Asian American, but also um, there is a certain familiarity and, and comfort level, if I may say, um, working with the people I work with, um, sharing similar backgrounds, um, the audience that we have, talking to people who grew up in New York and in Chinatown with an Asian American background, it's been, it's been fun and very revelatory for me. I love coming to work every day. This building has something, I mean, it's not the building, it's the, it's the space, it's what Maya Lin designed, how the exhibits have been designed. It's really just a wonderful place to, to be. the doors of MOCA, what can one expect when they come when they come here? What kind of exhibits do you guys have? What artifacts, historical pieces? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we have our permanent exhibit, um, which tells the story of Chinese community in America, but we also have rotating exhibits that really are very diverse and um, bring in contemporary photographers and comic book artists and um, fashion designers, uh, in some ways we're very specific and in other ways we're very broad. And I think that that's one of the things that makes us very special um, and something that we really try to retain as we grow. So we have as our core exhibit um, a exhibition which is really looking at the Chinese immigration experience to the U.S. called With the Single Step. And um, in December, we're actually going to be having an audio component to that. Right now, um, people can wander freely or they can go through guided tours. Um, I think the audio component will also give extra voice to that and enrich that particular um, walkthrough. But the exhibit is composed not only of visual pieces and you know writing, documentation, but also we have a, a video wall and that has interviews with Chinese American who are well known in different arenas, you know, not only your scientists and um, fashion designers, but also like the first Chinese American 
policewoman. So we have this permanent exhibition, which kind of forms the core of our museum, but we also have two different gallery spaces that have rotating exhibitions. Um, I think right now, uh, the focus has been on our comic book exhibition, which just opened last week. It's um, two exhibitions, one on contemporary Asian American comic book artists, and one a collection of comics, mainstream comics like Marvel Comics for the last 20 years depicting Asian American stereotypes. So kind of the past of how Asian American stereotypes were depicted, and then the present of Asian Americans who are actually making their own images and kind of taking those, those um, ideas on their own. What ways do you recommend that people come here and get the most out of the exhibits and just the things that are here at MOCA? Definitely checking out our website before visiting is, is a great way to learn about all of the different things that are happening, like what exhibits are up and what public programs are coming up. Tell me a little about the programs that you do. So with public programs, we really try to uh, plan things that are fun and that appeal to people who have very specific interests but also people who just want to learn something new and be part of something totally just unique. We just launched a music series where we have contemporary musicians collaborate with traditional musicians so we That's have cool. like we have like R&B hip-hop um, MCs uh, improvising with traditional musicians. Um, our first program had a jazz singer and a pipa player uh, improvise for an hour and uh, coming up we have three MCs who will be improvising with um, four classical musicians. So the, the, so we, we're doing a lot of things in music and sports and fashion, um, but trying to reimagine the way public programs um, are presented. Family days. We have tons of family day programs there. Some of them are our most popular. We just had a autumn moon festival, autumn harvest moon festival. Um, we had hundreds of children and they were making puppets and um, learning the customs of the Autumn Moon Festival, which are so important to all the East Asian countries and many other countries. And our other big um, Family Day festival, as you might guess, is Lunar New Year, which happens usually sometime in February. So mochanyc.org, if you look through our website, you'll see the days for the Family Days. And I would come early because they're very popular. People who come to our programs, they tend to be a small core that comes again and again because they like our programs, they feel comfortable here and welcome, and that is something that we're quite proud of having achieved in this museum. So here at MOCA, it looks like you guys dive really into the past, but also you do some work in the present and the future. What can we learn from the past that we can apply to today? We're not just a history museum, um, but we do care about the past. and. Um, learning about the past helps us make better decisions about the future um, and you know it's not like we're this staid learning institution um, but we are a community that's trying to learn um, how to grow and um, share our stories. For every country history is a very important aspect of understanding who they are as a people, where they come from and hopefully with that better understanding to better attain the future that is more desirable or, or uh, improved from what was. In 2014, we will be having an exhibition on the Asian American movement um, from 1960 through the 80s. And this is in conjunction with the New York Historical Society that will have a groundbreaking exhibition on the Chinese in New York. So theirs will be much more of a historical look at the importance of the Chinese individuals and community in New York and then ours will take it from there to the contemporary period where different groups of Asians are working together and separately to organize community justice groups, um, social uh, involved in social commitment and trying to better their community. So those are some of the things coming up. We just recently had a program with our founders, um, Jack and Charlie, and they'd, they'd never talked about the beginning of the museum before. So it was just a couple of weeks ago, they came in and they had a conversation with Helen Zia um, about what it was like to be young and what they needed to do to start um, this, this project. 
And then a couple of days later, we had uh, we had an event with 21 Pan-Asian American organizations that are engaged in social justice um, and community organizing. And it, you know, that I think that that for me as as a programmer, that those two programs really encompass what um, what I think MOCA should be doing um, for the for the community. We're talking about the past, but we're also looking at what's happening for young groups and that are trying to establish themselves today. We're just trying to be a space for people to come together and uh, feel safe to have those conversations. Well, the generations right now who are young are lucky because they have a place like MOCA to come and, and see the past and to see where, where they came from, essentially, whereas the original founders didn't have anything like that, and that's where MOCA was born. So, very fortunate, I would say. On this week's We Talk Shorts, we're checking out the latest additions to the art world at the Asian American Arts Alliance. Find out how one organization is trying to make your subway ride more visually appealing. We're headed to MOCA to see what unique medium authors are using to break stereotypes. And we're checking out a gallery known internationally for its Chinese contemporary art. On October 9th, the Asian American Arts Alliance celebrated its 13th anniversary and it paid tribute to extraordinary leaders of the Asian community and their commitment to the arts. The gala, held at Tribeca Rooftop, had highlights such as presentations by notorious artists, silent auction, cocktail and dinner, followed by award presentation. It's so important to recognize the contributions of so many Asian American artists uh, in the city. Um, and Asian American Arts Alliance is a real community bridge builder. So an event like this brings so many like-minded people together, so many creative minds together, and it's exciting. It's really important to have a mechanism to support the artists when they're starting out and when they're younger. That's when they really need the support. So an event like this uh, supports an organization and raises money uh, that in order to do that, and therefore I think it's incredibly important that A, it exists, and B, that the community as a whole come out and support um, these younger, more emerging artists as well. In many of these uh, big events, I think there's a, a definite family feeling. Um, even though you might not necessarily know the people here, it's, there, there's a certain feeling uh, family. Everyone agreed that the event was a major step on ending the underrepresentation of Asian American artists. I think there is not an understanding that um, Asian Americans are not the same as Far East Asia or South Asia that there's an experience, a heritage that's developed here within the United States that is both specific, at the same time, universal. Asia is rising. Asia is going to be more and more important in our lives. And there are many ways out there to help us with our cultural boost. I mean, the Asian American Arts Alliance has many opportunities for the artists to engage. This obviously is just one of them. On October 10th, the Center for Architecture in New York launched an exhibition that screams New York. It is free for the city of New York and completely created by New Yorkers. The West 4th Street subway station has a brand new artistic look because of the Design by New York subway exhibition. We visited the center to talk to the directors of the show. What we do is basically buy out the entire, you know, the ad space of an entire subway station. And so it really, you know, gets into the general public all the great work that our members are doing. Uh, some of the featured uh, buildings that we have. There is the Spruce Street School done by Swanky Hayden Connell Architects. That's sort of a local example. And then there's also, you know, buildings all over the world in Seoul, Korea. I mean, Turkey, just, you know, you, you really see that chapter members are doing work all over the world. And we think that design matters, that what we do as architects and what uh, architects and planners, landscape architects do around the city makes neighborhoods more livable. Um, sometimes those projects um, are not that well known. You, you know, you might not know what's happening in another borough or uptown. Uh, so we decided to do an exhibition that talked about the things that are transforming neighborhoods in our city. Architect members gather at the center to see a collection of the images from the show on a big screen. But the most stimulating part is certainly how many people will be reached with the subway displays. 
we would love, of course, people to come to the Center for Architecture, but lots of people take the subway. And to actually be able to talk about design as people are going to work in the morning and as they're coming home at night and during the day as well. Design My New York Subway Exhibition is a creative must-see available until November 4th. And remember, free for all. Comic book heroes are getting a new superpower, the ability to eliminate stereotypes. Editor Jeff Yang and celebrity panel members Keith Chow, Larry Hama, Jerry Ma, and Greg Pak gathered at MoCA Wednesday night for Extreme Makeover Comic Edition. The discussion focused on how past and modern stereotypes hurt characters and stories. Veteran writer Larry Hama explains why comics are an effective medium for breaking labels. Over 40 people attended the event as graphic novelists shared their own comic book extreme makeovers. The audience was also invited to participate in a question and answer session. Comic book enthusiasts were impressed by the forward thinking of the celebrity panel. The point of view of a reader, what was interesting was to hear the writers, uh, their perspectives on how stereotypes influence their stories, um, and in particular, like, the ways in which stereotypes can be useful, and the ways in which they need to be, you know, they need to be changed. I think it was very necessary because uh, it certainly took me away from thinking about stereotypes, and I think that this is a very important uh, fact. You know. I thought it was really interesting, um, especially the part they were presenting the sort of characters that were problematic and sort of classical characters of trans made, etc. and comic media and how they had been reimagined or redesigned into more complex or deeper or more interesting characters by the artist. MOCA's latest exhibit, Marvels and Monsters and Alt Comics, explores how comics are breaking stereotypes. The exhibit will be shown until February 24th, 2013. We went to Eli Klein's Fine Art Gallery in the posh neighborhood of Soho in Lower Manhattan to check out why this Chinese contemporary art gallery has been successful. We spoke with the gallery managers and they told us how Eli made his gallery stand out in the Western art world, among so many other galleries. The current exhibit, Half Truth by Lu Zheng Wang, is very impressive enticing viewers to look beyond surfaces and filling the gallery's gorgeous two floors. Eli, the owner of the gallery, he goes to China several times a year to visit st artist studios and meet with artists. And he also goes to a lot of these big exhibitions in Beijing to select the artists that we think they might work well in the Western market. We have a lot of people coming in seeking out Chinese contemporary art very specifically. They're interested in seeing what's here because we have a very specific niche and I think that that really helps uh, to kind of make the gallery, uh, you know, very prominent in terms of that field. Uh, Chinese contemporary art right now is getting very popular, so it is something that we are happy to be here to kind of bring on all these new artists and to bring something new to each exhibition. Eli Klein's presence in New York City has definitely helped educate people on some, you know, upcoming and mid-career Chinese artists that really don't have prominent voices here in our part of the world, the United States, South America, Europe. However, the most successful pieces they have are part of Lou Belin's Hiding in New York series. Each photo is taken uh, outside landmark New York sites, uh, in particular the Freedom Towers, uh, outside the Tiles for America tribute wall on 7th Avenue, capturing a lot of the energy in places in New York that have a big impact on you know, local New Yorkers. For um, New Yorkers, I think that seeing his art reflect our city has been very exciting. Boleyn's exhibit has been continued in March and will stay at the gallery. Half Truth is at the gallery until the 21st of this month.